One of the questions I got asked recently is, is Color Finale is still a worthwhile investment now that Final Cut Pro X 10.4 has color wheels, a LUT loader, uh, hue and saturation curves, color curves, all that stuff. It's now it's really powerful. So is Color Finale still worth it? So that's what I'm gonna try to answer in this video. Hey, what's up guys? This is Marcos and this channel is all about helping you create better videos so you can build your brand. So if you're new to this channel, subscribe right now and you won't miss a thing. All right, so Color Finale versus the new 10.4 update in Final Cut Pro X, which is better? Uh, I would say that after using both of them extensively, I prefer Color Finale. And I'm gonna keep this short and get straight to the point. I'm gonna show you in the computer why I think Color Finale is still a worthwhile investment. Here's a project I recently worked on. And first of all, I wanna show you that you can achieve the same color grade with both Color Finale and what's built into the 10.4 update. Uh, this color grade I did with the, the tools that's in Final Cut Pro X 10.4, and this is Color Finale. You can see there's not much of a difference. If we look at uh, the new 10.4 update, it has color wheels. I really like color wheels. Instead of using the color board, you should stay away from color board and move on to color wheels. Um, oh, here's one thing. It has this temperature control. So if your white balance is a little bit off, now you can correct it with this slider. So that's pretty neat. Uh, let me go back. This is the 10.4 update. Uh, so you have here the custom LUT. You can load custom LUTs. Uh, you have the hue and saturation curves, which looks like this. This is really powerful. I have a tutorial on this, on how to use this. Um, you have the color curves, also really nice. Uh, so those are the basic ones I use. Now, over here in Color Finale, as you can see, I have here an adjustment layer. So what's nice about adjustment layers is that you can apply your color grade to different uh, footage by just dragging this, this adjustment layer. So whatever... Uh, color grade I apply to the adjustment layer, it'll apply it to the clips down below. Final, uh, Final Cut Pro X does not give us an adjustment layer. This comes free with Color Finale. Once you purchase it, they'll give you the adjustment layer. Also, I have a video here if you want to gain access to a free adjustment layer, which I made. So uh, check out this, this card right here. All right. So that's nice. Um, let's look at Color Finale. So this is our color grade. Uh, we, this is color finale. We open the controls and it's a little bit different. So you have this panel, you can move around. Uh, we have the color wheels, which they call lift gamma gain. And here's the saturation, basically the same controls and, uh, the LUT utility, you load your LUTs. You, they also have this LUT gallery so you can preview different LUTs. You see that? That's really nice. And then they have the vectors, which is exactly like the hue and saturation curves. And then they have the color curves. And I just like the slope of this lines much better. They're, I don't know, it's just the slope. Let me show you what the uh, color curves look in Final Cut Pro X. Where are they here? Color curves, this is what they look. And they're a little harder to manipulate because the slope, I don't like the slope basically. And also let, let's say I do a, 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 a fade, you know, the fade effect like this one. Oh, that's too much. And I want to turn down the opacity. I have to scroll down and I have to turn down the mix, which is basically the opacity, right? With, let me show you how you do that with color finale, with color finale. Hold on, this is not it. Click here. We open the controls and I do a matte curve with our fade with color finale. Oh, let me check it. So you see that? I do curve, and then I wanna turn down the opacity is just right here, I don't have to scroll down. So that's much faster. Also, let's say whenever you're color grading, you wanna check that your skin tones remain along the skin tone line. So how do you do that? You turn on the mask here, I'm in color finale. You turn on the mask and I can always move the color mask to my forehead. That's where I usually set it. You can see my skin tones are along the skin tone line. Let's say it was off. I use the vectors with color finale and I move this, I slide it over. Usually with the red and yellow, I fi fix the skin tones. But this is not a color grading tutorial. I'm just showing you how you would do that. And then I can quickly uncheck it to see how my color grade looks, all right? Now let me show you how it, you would do that with um, Final Cut Pro X 10.4 updates. Uh, so to, to do that, let's say I turn on the mask, right? I want to check my skin tones. I want, 
And I'm going to also move this to my forehead. And I would use the hue and saturation curves to fix any uh, skin tone issues right now. It looks like it looked a little pale. So what I can do is grab this um, eyedropper, sample my skin, right? It'll tell me my skin tone lies right here. And I can turn up a little bit of that saturation, right? Saturate my skin tones. Now I want to uncheck the mask. So I have to go back, draw a mask. Now I can check. Oh, I think it needs more saturation. So I have to go back to the hue and saturation curves. Or how about this time I go to the color wheels and I turn up my saturation maybe here in the master or, in the, or I can turn it up the saturation in my midtones. Let me go back to uncheck the draw mask. There you go. I think my skin tones look much better. You see, there's more back and forth with these uh, sliders. When, when I'm trying to check for skin tones or I'm trying to change the opacity, uh, also, the layout is just a little bit more click, click, clicks to do what I want to do. If you're into, this is why I prefer Color Finale. If you're into color grading, you do a lot of it and, and you like doing it or you're shooting S-Log like I am. Let me show you what S-Log looks. I'm going to disable uh, this adjustment layer. This is what S-Log footage looks straight out of the camera, right? If you're shooting S-Log, you might want to get Color Finale because it makes it your workflow, workflow is much faster. You can work faster. There's less clicks. And I, I just think Color Finale is more intuitive. Now, you have to decide for yourself. Is it worth $100? Are you going to be color grading a lot? Um, then I, I think it's a worthwhile investment. Now, I spent my 100 bucks on Color Finale before the 10.4 update. So it was a no-brainer. But now... If you buy what's already included with the 10.4 update, you can basically do all the same things. It's just the the workflow. It's much faster with Color Finale. I'm also thinking about getting Color Finale Pro because then I could do a lot more things uh, with, I can actually create LUTs, which is something I wanna do. Just a disclaimer, I'm not getting paid by Color Finale. There's no affiliate links. It's just, uh, this is my personal opinion. I hope this helps you guys. So there you have it. That's my explanation for using Color Finale. If you found this video useful, if you want to see more like this, please let me know down in the comment section. Also, give me a thumbs up. It lets me know that this is cool, this is valuable, and I should make more of this. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.